So if you're watching this video, it's because you clicked and you saw a really engaging thumbnail and title that went with it. Now in this episode, we're gonna cover the do's and don'ts of making really great thumbnails that actually get clicks confirmed. Let's dive in. My name is Mark Angelo Coppola and I'm a digital storyteller, entrepreneur, and creative who has made thousands of pieces of content online viewed by millions all over the world. But the one thing I have always been passionate about is helping people like you create great video content. That's why I partnered up with Cinemaker to create the Director Studio Show, a video podcast that brings you behind the scenes on the how-tos of creating a multi-camera show for entrepreneurs, creators, podcasters, and marketing experts who dream of creating simple, effective, and scalable video content. So let's dive in. So when it comes to mastering your video production game and creating content online, one thing that is often overlooked is the importance of thumbnails. To me, thumbnails are an art. They go well beyond just a quick Photoshop job or an afterthought in creating a video. In fact, amazing creators have this to say about them. Probably spend around five to ten thousand dollars a thumbnail. Just making wow. sure you get the right image and it's good. Because like the thumbnail makes a difference between fifty million views or two hundred million. Now if there's any creator that you should be taking advice from, it's probably the biggest one on YouTube who can religiously speaks about the importance of phenomenal thumbnails. In fact, he never hits record without first envisioning the title and the thumbnail. He makes his videos in accordance to that rather than making thumbnails in accordance to your videos. Now, that's not easy. I don't think that that's the creative process necessarily for everyone, although I would say for people who are professional YouTubers, it is an absolute bust. But if you're creating content about your brand, about you, maybe you're hosting a video podcast or a show like this one, then some thought of thumbnails makes sense. I mean, I think you want to Definitely have an episode flow. You want to have things you want to talk about, guests you want to bring on, whatever that might look like for you. But having an idea of what those thumbnails are going to be and how you're going to format them, as well as making templates and other things that you can use and reuse to save you an enormous amount of time, energy, and money producing them is definitely not something I would look over. So I've got Kyler here who produces the thumbnails for this show. Um, Kyler, I mean, what is your take on the process of creating thumbnails? Like how, how important are thumbnails from your personal perspective, creating not only this show's thumbnails, but many others as well? I mean, like anything, it, it, it comes in a package, right? Like if you don't look at the thumbnails, like when you think of YouTube and you're searching, uh, let's say how to create a podcast and you have hundreds, if not thousands of different videos that you can click on. Well, the thing that's going to make them stop and watch your video is the thumbnail. It is the first barrier to capture the attention of your ideal client. So it's very important. And I mean, if you haven't been convinced from watching Mr. Beast and all these big value creators about talking about how they create thumbnails and how much money, time, and energy they spend on creating thumbnails, it is crucial is the first step to actually getting someone to watch a video and you can have the best video on the planet and if your uh, thumbnail is trash then no one's going to pay attention to you right i'm trying to think of like a good analogy and the only thing that comes to my mind is going to a networking event and you know coming in with like, I don't know, sweatpants and a t-shirt versus actually dressing nice. You don't have to be in a three-piece suit, but dress the part for the audience that you're trying to attract. So Mm. that is just huge. Yeah, I I think that thumbnails are exactly that. That reference of showing up and understanding and dressing the part is an important component of your credibility online. And when it comes to credibility online and whether or not I'm gonna pay attention to your how-to video or somebody else's how-to video, for example, might boil down to the professionalism of the thumbnail, right? Who looks like they do this for a living? Who looks like they answer and make good videos that are probably gonna be engaging or probably gonna be interesting? And at the end of the day, it's it's exactly the same as, you know, we have this this idea of not judging a book by its cover. But at the end of the day, if you haven't read the book and nobody particularly recommended it to you or wasn't on the top of the whatever, the New York Times bestselling list, well, then the reality is you're partially going to judge a book by its cover. You're going to walk around a bookstore, look at the different covers, look at the different titles, look at the packaging that it comes in, and maybe from there, pick it up, read the back, do whatever, read the prologue or something like that. But it if that's what 
is part of the decision-making process that somebody has to make to engage with your content, then I would say that the number one thing that people are overlooking is the value of that art. Understanding that that art has a massive impact on whether your video is successful or not. So you can have the most amazing content, but if nobody's clicking it, then what's the point, right? So I, I just, I really want to nail this home. I believe your thumbnails are an important, if not crucial part of your online success. And it also starts with not only your ability to kind of create a thumbnail on the spot, but also to pre-plan it. Now, one of the practices that we use and I use not only for the Director Studio Show and, you know, all kinds of videos I make for Cinemaker, but in everything that I do and everyone that I, that I support, everyone who I share my marketing knowledge that I've gained over many, many, many years, I always put an emphasis on your ability to build on-brand thumbnails. Now, what do I mean by on-brand thumbnails? One, yes, brand colors, logos, fonts, um, things of that nature, but also two, thumbnails that are like truly enticing or interesting to your core audience. You want something that speaks to the person who's listening. And those types of thumbnails exist. There are many YouTubers, many content creators that are doing an amazing job at making this happen. So later in this episode, we're gonna dive in to the do's and don'ts by actually just going to YouTube and, and judging some of them. But before I get there, I did wanna give you the seven tips that I think you can use to make better thumbnails. So. Tip number one is uh, really, it boils down to a kind of a, a double-edged sword. And that's really talking about having a solid foundation. Now for me, having a solid foundation means having templates, multiple templates, not just one template, multiple templates in multiple formats. So thumbnails that are designed for YouTube, thumbnails that are designed for Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, uh, vertical thumbnails, things that you can use to promo a clip or let somebody know in an Instagram stories, hey, here's what the here's the video that you can go watch on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever it is, okay? Having multiple templates that you can use for different types of content, for different types of uh, topics that you might be talking about would be extremely valuable. Now, when you're thinking of a video podcast, for example, having a thumbnail with your guest's face, particularly if they're a very known person, could be very valuable because that face or that person has clout and their audience is more likely to click on your video if they don't know your channel, if they see that their, you know, maybe influ their favorite influencer, their, um, you know, favorite YouTuber is in the thumbnail. That is no doubt going to be helpful to you. But there are other ways of doing this and you've seen them before. I want you to think about thumbnail templates or concepts, things that are, are recurrent in certain channels thumbnails and the way that that pops up. Are you starting to see anything? Are you starting to think of some of these things? Maybe red arrows that are pointing in particular directions or circles around particular things. Boxes, like when I think uh, Joe Rogan experience uh, uh, clips thumbnails, I think about little green or red boxes that go around an image that is of the topic that the clip is about. There are a thousand ways of doing this and I know that some of them come off as very cheesy, but I do believe that that has an enormous amount of value. Now, layered on top, and this is the same tip, but layered on top of that foundation of having templates, I believe that you should do what is called batch production of thumbnails ahead of time. Now, what does that mean and what does that look like? I'm gonna show you that in a second, but what I mean by that is rather than trying to create a thumbnail each and every time you're making a video, what if you did a photo shoot in your niche, in your topic base, let's say, um, that speaks to and allows you to have content that you can use to make the thumbnails. Now, if you clicked on this video and if you've seen any of the Director Studio st Show videos um, uh, that have come from this very show and any of the thumbnails associated to it, they're all coming from, I think, two photo shoots that I did over time. Now, you'll notice that in those photo shoots, I kind of have a similar look and feel, my beard, my hair, kind of looks similar. You'll notice that I'm always wearing black and I'm often wearing similar style jewelry to what I'm wearing in each and every episode, not only of this show, but of the, the photo shoots of this show. Now I do this on purpose. I have multiple of these shirts. I have lots of pieces of jewelry that all fit the look and feel of what I'm presenting 
as the brand of Cinemaker, as the brand of the Director Studio Show. And I do batch photography where I cut my hair once, I prepare myself once, I get the lighting right once, I hire the photographer once. I don't have to pay for a thousand photo shoots that cost way more money over a long period of time. But I can do batch photos with lots of different props, lots of different elements, different looks, different feels, some a little closer, some a little further away, some with gear in in the equation. I don't know. Okay, but all of those are done via batch photography that then we can use that content to supplement or to become like the base layer, the foundation of our thumbnail. So what does that look like? So I'm going to share uh, the screen here. You see my little clips and, and tips over there. Let's blur that out for half a second um, so that you don't get ahead of yourself. But um, <laughs> the the tips here are, you know, some of the, the thumbnails that we use from or pull from, you know, There are photos that I pull up that this is all part of my studio setup that you're seeing right here and right now. This is all part of that look and feel, right? So you can kind of scroll through and there's different ones with the phone in focus. There's some that are a little bit more vertical or horizontal in nature. There's some that are more kind of, you know, uh, let's say artistic in nature. Some are more detail oriented, like play, hitting the record button or things of that nature. Now, all of this, all of this photo shoot that happened here in my studio is part of one single photo shoot that I had done that was part of the context of what enabled me to make batch content, batch thumbnails that inherently are really, really, really easy for us to do so that we don't have to spend an enormous amount of time and money creating them later. Now, by doing this, again, you're, you're just, you're, you're optimizing the entire process, not only for you, but for your design team and everyone else that's supporting you. So I, I definitely highly, highly, highly recommend batch production. I'm not saying batch producing all your thumbnails ahead of time, although that can be a thing if you know what the thumbnails are going to be. Imagine making an online course. You know what all the titles are going to be. You know what all the themes are going to be. You can batch produce all the thumbnails of one designer in one graphic run, and you'll probably get a better deal out of it than if you're hiring them every single week to, you know, show up and into their emails and now conceive something new week after week after week. So that is definitely a, a strong tip. Um, Second tip would be to make your thumbnail and title complementary. So what do I mean by that and what and how is that best done? Okay, a lot of people tend to come up with a title for their episode or they have an idea of the title of their episode. But titles should be different than thumbnails for two reasons. One, titles have their own genius that goes behind them. And a lot of that has to do with search traffic SEO and a bunch of other things related to what people may or may not click on or what people may or may not be searching for particularly, okay? That being said, there are ways of creating enticing titles and adding, you know, caps or you you won't believe what happens next or all kinds of different things you could think of, okay? Those are all really enticing and great, but that's in the title and that should be left in the title. Now, what I would do is use a title that is search worthy or, or... I don't want to say clickbaity, but, you know, let's say click worthy. But you should make a thumbnail that adds to it, that acts a little bit more like an enticing factor or a hook, which is really, um, you know, tip number three, and I'll get to that in a second. But you want to make sure that they're complementary. You want to make sure that whatever's said in the title and whatever's said if there are some words in the thumbnail should be fairly short in the thumbnail and should be complementary to the title so that they read the title and say, okay, I'm interested in that the thumbnail just grabs them or pulls them in and or vice versa, that the thumbnail is what stands out. And then they look at the title of the video and say, okay, yes, this is a video I'm interested in. Boom, let me click. Either way, the thumbnail being complementary gives you two shots at somebody being interested in your video rather than one. Because if you, so many people do this, they put their title in the thumbnail And that's not, it's not adding anything. It's not necessarily informing you anymore. So you're, you're really taking one stab at somebody being interested rather than using the value of search and the value of other things when it, when it comes to titling, um, as well as other like complimentary video, other videos that maybe have similar titles or similar themes that cover the same topics. You might want to title your, your, your title similar to other videos that have had success. There's a whole reason for that. You'll get that in another episode. But complimentary thumbnails uh, is always the way to go. So I kind of precluded tip number three a little bit, but I would make sure 
that the thumbnail also contains what I'll consider to be a hook. Now, you may or may not have heard the concept of having a hook at the beginning of your video. You start your video and it's something engaging. There's a reason why I'm listening. Unlike, you know, coming onto this podcast, if every single time I was like, I was saying the same thing and I was introducing myself and I was introducing somebody else, I wasn't giving you a reason to watch at the beginning of the video. Well, that same thing applies to the hook that I would consider to be in your thumbnail. Lines like, you won't believe what happened next or point number four out of a list um, is gonna blow you away or pointing to something or blurring out something in the image. All of these can be a way of creating a real hook, a real reason where somebody would be incredibly engaged in what may be behind in this video. Now, I'm not saying to be clickbait. I am not saying to put a thumbnail that has nothing to do or has no relation uh, to the video that you're producing or creating. I am saying that you should find what's interesting about your video, maybe the one thing that if somebody were to click, if they were to walk away with one piece of information, what would that piece of information be? And then incorporate that into your production. Incorporate that as a thumbnail uh, element that is incredibly important in what you're creating and doing, okay? I wanna get into this concept of exaggerating but delivering, right? I talked a little bit about clickbait and point number four is that you shouldn't be doing clickbait. You shouldn't be considering making a thumbnail that has absolutely no relationship to why or, or how somebody should pay attention. But what you should be doing is exaggerating or, or using the value of a thumbnail to create an enticing reason to click. And that allows somebody to kind of say, oh, I'm really interested in this. But then the number one thing that I suggest you do is that you also deliver. Now there's a channel on YouTube called Daily Dose of Internet. Uh, I particularly love it. It's really fast, really short. It tends to be like two minute or three minute videos. And they have very good thumbnails, okay? And they have very good titles and a bunch of other stuff. And they're just taking some viral clips on the internet and sending people to watch them. And it's a series of like composited viral clips. Now, that being said, the thumbnail and the first clip of the video are always the same. He always uses the thumbnail, which is why he understands is a large portion of why you clicked and then shows you that clip right away. So he gives you and satisfies that curiosity right away. So exaggerate, uh, but deliver tip number five. Now, um, tip number six is uh, use context or known influencers to inspire curiosity. Now, what do I mean by context or known influencers? Okay. In the case of known influencers, it's fairly simple, right? If you recognize this face, then maybe, maybe it would be valuable to put in the thumbnail. So if I have a guest on my podcast, let me think uh, Elon Musk. Well, obviously, if I want to talk about Elon Musk, whether he's a guest on my podcast or not, whether I'm discussing the latest and greatest or the whatever, the failings and winnings of Tesla, any of those different things, using their brand right? Whether that be a Tesla vehicle or whether that be Elon Musk's face or a combination of both adds to the notoriety or to the context of the topic that you will be discussing. And using known faces, particularly faces, is always a very strong uh, concept in thumbnails, in creating thumbnails in many different ways, okay? So the context of existing brands and existing faces is the first thing. The second thing is Let's say you're talking about a subject, a topic. I mentioned uh, Joe Rogan Experience Clip Channel. Well, the clip channels and the clips themselves are talking about things that are happening in the world, whether it's uh, something that happened in a UFC fight or anything of that nature. If you can reference that, that clip, if you can pull an image, particularly an image that people might have seen maybe in um, the Wall Street Journal or on, on the internet or memes, Anything of that nature that brings in that context that has an, a, a hidden message or an existing predetermined meeting, right? When I think, or when I say, make America great again, you think physically of probably a guy wearing a red hat, right? You think of Donald Trump. You think of right wing or Republican or whatever you might think. You have an existing association and that context can be used for or against you. You can use that context, the existing symbolisms, the existing um, 
thoughts in cultural narrative, right? The existing ideas and concepts that already live rent-free in your brain, and you can use that to entice people to click on your content. So I think it's so valuable that you would just, just use that, use people's faces and use people's brands in a very engaging and powerful way. Now, the last tip that I have for you is to stay on brand. Now, I know that I've already covered that the, you may want to stay on brand or you should have some concept of your brand with the whole side of templates, whether that be fonts, uh, colors, as well as um, a look and feel to the logo and to maybe the, the shape of what your thumbnails may or may not look like. And I would say that staying on brand is maintaining that very powerfully. Back to Mr. Beast, his thumbnails are very on brand. Often a picture of him, often a picture of something very extravagant or insane, whatever the concept of the video is. Think of David Dobrik, same thing. He, his brand is emotional reaction. It's funny, it's interesting, it's shocking. It's like, you won't believe what just happened in this video, or you won't believe what happened over here. It's using drama in many cases, in Dobrik's case, and his brand is to have his thumbnails be extravagant, kind of like Mr. Beast. He predates Mr. Beast in many ways in terms of his internet notoriety, but also very dramatic and on brand in that way. So I think that that could be unbelievably impactful and valuable is to stay on brand. Once you've determined a path, once you've found success with some of your thumbnails, stick with it. Keep making those types of thumbnails. Allow people to engage with one video, see a thumbnail of one type and kind, and then come back and engage with it again. Because when they see something similar, they see your face again, they see your on brand type thumbnail again, they can recognize, oh, that's this channel, that's this show, that's this influencer that's making another clip and I'm interested. I like the last one, let me click on the next one. So with that said, why don't we dive into some of the YouTube, well, let's just look at the homepage of YouTube right now and see what clips look good and what clips don't. And, and Kyler, if you, you want to you know, chime in, feel free. Um, okay, so I'm gonna click over here yeah, that, go for it. Uh, interesting thing that I think would be important for everyone here listening is to make sure that when we're looking at thumbnails, like let's say we're looking at Mr. Beast thumbnail, it's a very unique style. Depending on the niche you're in or the topics you're talking about, you may or may not want to, you know, not copy, but use it as inspiration for your thumbnails, right? So our channel, right, the Director Studio Show, we are not creating Mr. B style thumbnails because we are not attracting necessarily that that exact audience, right? Well, it's off brand. So it's, it's really important. For us. Exactly. So it's important to look at what's working well with thumbnails, but also look at your industry and your market because you want to make sure exactly it's on brand, but brand really is not just about the colors and the fonts you use, although that is important and you want to make sure you do that, but it's communicating the identity of who you're talking to, right? So if I'm talking to, you know, B2B professionals, I may not use, uh, a, 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 you know, in ex, um, the facial expressions in Mr. Beast, or I may, you know, depending on who in that market. All I'm trying totally. to say is the point that I'm really trying to make is that, really re-engineer who you're trying to speak to and th that will help you come up with these concepts and then you find the inspiration who's doing it right maybe it's more a gary v style thumbnail or it's an alex homozy style thumbnail whoever find the inspiration that's in your niche your market um that really speaks to you because if it speaks to you and you you know work with your clients it's going to speak with your clients so i think that's 100%. just a really important point to go outside the branding conversation of just fonts and colors, but speaking to your ideal audience. On brand is a, is a target that is specific to the brand that you're creating, not just to look and feel. It's not just a design thing. It is a concept thing. It is a theory of sorts, but that theory becomes practice when, when done and put into these thumbnails in these different ways. So I fully agree with that. I thank you for adding that. Um, okay, so let's get to YouTube here real fast. Um, Okay, quickly, this is an unsigned in YouTube account. This is based off of, obviously I'm in Canada, Montreal. So you're looking at different thumbnails and you're gonna see a bunch of popular stuff and you're gonna see some maybe things that are related to, I don't know, things that this computer uh, is being suggested in some way, shape or form. Now, when I look here, there's a couple of things that stick out to me, okay? 
one, there are some thumbnails that work better than others just in these top 10, okay? Which one do you think stands out to you, right? Just take a second, think about it. Judging this, this thumbnail over here, the copy of this habit, as well as this Taco Bell thumbnail, to me, stands out significantly more than the others. I would say this one over here seems okay, right? Um, and then, you know, this fail army one is okay because it's on brand, but there's nothing in the thumbnail that's like, oh, I really want to see that particular clip because I know what fail army is. It's a series of clips, again, of people just, you know, you know, face planting basically and doing a bunch of other stuff. There are some thumbnails where the title, for example, here, you know, Trudeau throws a tantrum, blah, blah, blah. That title, that title is enticing. And if I'm interested in Canadian politics, then I might be interested in it. But the thumbnail isn't working for it. It's not doing anything for it. It's not really enticing people to click or pay attention in any way, shape, or form, okay? So um, if I go further down, look here, here's a Mr. Beast thumbnail of a video that came out, you know, two days ago. Now, sh shout out to the number of viewers that he has over here. Um, but this, you know, this thumbnail over here, definitely very enticing. You definitely see it's Mr. Beast, so you know it's a Mr. Beast video the second you see it. And you see, you know, you know, uh, you know what is it? A $100 million car is the title, but then you see the car in the thumbnail. Complimentary again. He could have put the $100 million car element with words over on the, on the thumbnail, but I think he did something that was more complimentary. Same with this kind of face-off thumbnail over here, KSI versus Tommy Fury. These are both recognizable faces. Therefore, they are using the context of understanding that these two are going to fight and are doing it in a context that looks and feels fight-like. Again, fairly good thumbnail. Look at this one over here. You know, big facial reaction. You can see that it's a video of this person reacting to other videos. Fairly interesting. Decent thumbnail. You know, some of these ones over here, well, they're using the images of a bunch of people who got scammed. I saw, I actually watched this video as well. Now, is this good? The thumbnail's okay. Is it super enticing? Not necessarily, but you definitely recognize if anybody who knows who CoffeeZilla is, he has a video channel where he, you know, exposes scams and does a bunch of stuff. And who got scammed in this case? Well, it's Theo Vaughn. It's uh, some of these other people. Sarah Silverstein, I think her name is, or whatever it is, right? The, the comedians. These are a bunch of different people who all get scammed in the same problem. So this thumbnail, again, works fairly interestingly well. Okay, so let's hit reload and just see if there's a couple more thumbnails that pop up over here. Okay, well, boom. You've got a Cinemaker thumbnail, down on an install. Okay, so this video is not meant to be enticing in a particular way. This video lands in the context, for example, this download and install video of Cinemaker lands in the context of something very different um, uh, because it is an instructional video. So the title, download and install, has a different, a different layer, and it, this is an in-app video. This is an app, a video you would actually see in-app. So it's less competing on YouTube, but therefore it won't do as well. Well, this Apple new, Apple's new, uh, you know, uh, 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 seven lens, is that what it says? Seven lens and photo 15, decent thumbnail, very interesting. You know, this guy, Jared, um, you know, uh, Poland, I think his name is, he does a lot of video content about different cameras and different things. And by having his face on it, but also having a context piece, right? Like this little Apple, um, you know, logo and the different things that is valuable. This is a decent thumbnail. Um, same with different stuff, you know, stop being soft. The speech nobody wants, uh, wants to, to hear, right? Different title, different thumbnail, complimentary in many ways, very valuable in many ways. You've got a bunch of, uh, you know, videos of, of uh, Jay Shetty, very popular YouTuber, started up on Facebook, did a, lo a whole lot of stuff. I know him well. Um, Jay Shetty, decent thumbnail, stop people pleasing. Again, complimentary to the title, but showing the faces of him and the guest. Now, we could go on forever, and there's a lot that can be said about making thumbnails, but Kyler, you did have a suggestion of... Um, I think it's like a newsletter that you subscribe to uh, that was fairly interesting. Why don't you share a little bit about that? 
I found this newsletter called Creator Hooks, and it's free. And every week on Monday, it actually a new one just came out that I can share my screen and show you guys. It goes over, I think, four or five um, hooks, uh, not hooks, pardon me, um, thumbnails of the week. And they tell and they break down why it did so well. They break it down through the psychology, through the text, through the colors. And it really just iterates like how um, thumbnails play a huge part in the success of your videos. And then I think the fifth or sixth one is the flop of the week. And they show you why this video flopped and what did they do wrong and how they can improve. So I'll quickly share my screen. All right, so Creator Hooks, um, you can sign up. And if you just look up creativehooks.com, um, there'll be a link to sign up. And right under under the hood, this is the first one. They give you a score. They give you the framework. So how you can replicate this exact video. So we put a, a $10,000 engine in our $500 Civic. And they break down the framework. We put expensive thing in cheap thing. Right. So you could use this framework for your thumbnails, not only just for the thumbnail, but the title as well. Right. And so it gives you a score. It gives you why this works, how you can use this thumbnail and, and examples of it in action, alternatives and different niches. OK, so this is a really of course, they have some sponsorships, whatever. And I want to go down to the flop of the week, flop of the week. So now it's talking about why this didn't work negative score, why it flopped, an explanation, right? It, it, it just helping you every single week create better looking thumbnails. You guys don't have to struggle anymore. There's free tools just like this. We're not sponsored by them. Just a, a, a tool that I use every single week. You know, it takes me less than 10 minutes to read through this and I gain something out of it. I learn about what's working in different niches and how can I acquire that into my videos and my packages of YouTube content. But yeah, this is it. I really highly recommend you sign up. It's free and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, I think the key here is understanding that creating really good thumbnails is something, it's almost like a muscle that you work out. Okay. It's something that you're going to learn more and more and more about as you start considering what that may or may not look like in your production of your content. So go out there, study, look at YouTube videos without necessarily clicking them, go to YouTube and research, think about the thumbnails, and then put thought into yours. Um, so you can make better content and actually get more clicks, just like we promised. Anyway, we'll see you in the next episode.